South Alabama slams Southern Miss. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Of course, it's Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Tremendous night of basketball on Thursday night in the Sunbelt. We had some blowouts. We had some close games. We had some comebacks. Uh, we had it all. Uh, tonight's episode, or today's episode, Friday's episode, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Did not see what happened on Thursday night coming. Did not see South Alabama blowing out Southern Miss. Now, it was a one-point favorite for Southern Miss, which tells me they're begging you to bet on Southern Miss. All right? I I don't think Southern Miss should have been a 10- or 15-point favorite, but just based on the season, uh, even in how they're playing, and and South Alabama playing much better, but they still should have been a, oh, I don't know, three- or four-point favorite. They're begging you to bet on Southern Miss. And Southern Miss never had the lead. South Alabama beats Southern Miss 85-54. And I'm not sure it was that close. The closest this got, this game got was 0-0. After that, it was 13-10. Southern Miss got no closer than that the rest of the way. Austin Crowley was taken out a little bit early, like midway, less, less than midway through of the second half. Felipe Hassey. Didn't have any shots. He didn't take a shot in the first half. And Crowley only took four. Uh, If you had Jamar Franklin coming off the bench, and he came off the bench at the end of the first half, and then played a lot in the second half as a reserve, he scored 15 points. Crowley had nine. If you had Jamar Franklin scoring more points in this ballgame than Austin Crowley, you probably don't have to go to work today because you made a lot of money. Did not see this coming. Now, again, Southern Miss has played. They played nine, and they've won nine in a row. And now South Alabama has won six out of seven. Out of those seven games, they've been behind, I believe, a total of 97 minutes. All versus Troy. I could be wrong. Uh, AL.com's Craig Stevens is going to check that out. But I think it was all against Troy in the game that they lost. And it was basically, well, the last minute of that ball game and a little plus. Uh, but other than that, out of the last seven ball games, South Alabama has just trailed by for for just over a minute and a half, which is interesting because early on in the season, they're having trouble scoring on their first possession. They would either turn it over or miss. Most times, turn it over. And I even think on there when I when I went through it and found uh, scoring on their first possession, it was a putback. <laughs> so they were getting off to awful starts. Midway through, you know, January. And now all of a sudden, they have won six out of the last seven. They're moving up in the standings. And again, they just dominated from the outset. Shooting-wise, Southern Miss actually shot worse in uh, the second half than they did in the first half. They shot like 52% in the first half. In the second half, they shot just 33%. Meanwhile, South Alabama could not miss, like 56% for the game. Uh, they shot shot almost 58% in the second half. A lot of those reserves, uh, they were fantastic. They made their threes. Now, some guys, uh, you know, 13 out of uh, 32 from three is pretty good, right? 41%, so 40% is pretty good. Um, and all, some of that was from Jamar Franklin making four out of five, right? Owen White kind of struggled through most of the first half, finished up, with uh, 413 from three, but he plays such good defense. He finished with 14 points. South Alabama had five guys in double figures. Only uh, Harris from Southern Miss was, Dennis J. Harris was in double figures for the starters for, for Southern Miss. Again, unbelievable ball game that South Alabama played, and we'll see if they can finish it off, okay? Uh, They got ULM coming in, and all of a sudden, ULM's great season, where they got more wins this year, right? Seven than 
than they had in the last three, not combined, but they hadn't won more than five since the 1819 season. Now all of a sudden they've lost four in a row. Uh, and Saturday is the last home game for South Alabama. They go to Texas State. They actually have a two-game lead on Texas State. Uh, and then they finish up with the Cajuns. Now, it's going to be tough to go into Louisiana and beat the Cajuns. And Texas State's going to be pesky as well. So that's not for sure. So this is a big ball game uh, for South Alabama. Here's the thing about this tournament that I would find interesting. Okay, so we'll just for the sake of this conversation, South Alabama finishes between five and 10. All right. Uh, they get a first round bye. So the fifth and sixth seeds will play the winners from the bottom four. So five and six will play, uh, you know, 10 versus 14. Uh, or 11 versus 14 and 12 versus 13, okay? But that's not on the next day. They get a day break. So usually, you know, in these tournament things, you want tired legs. How tired are they going to be after playing just one game and they get a day off? Tournament starts on Thursday. They get off Wednesday. Then they play Thursday. Then they get tournament off. Then they get a day off on Friday. And then play Saturday, Sunday, Monday, if you get that far. And so now do you want to play a team that may be in rhythm? Or do you want to play a team that hasn't played in about a week? The same as you, right? The season end, the regular season ends on Friday, the 24th. And so you may end up playing. You won't play if you're in that 5 to 10 spot. You won't play again until Thursday. But if you are in the 7, 8, 9, 10 spot, you will play another team that hasn't played since Friday. Whereas if you're in the 5 or 6 spot, you yes, you'll be playing a lesser team, the Arkansas States, the Georgia States, the Coastal Carolinas, who've beaten South Alabama, uh, and the Texas State. Two of those teams are going to move on. But they will have played a game. And sometimes, you know, you get that where – in rhythm versus rusty and rested, it could be very interesting. Having said all that, uh, South Alabama could not be playing any better than they already are. All right. They are playing as well uh, as they have been. And that was as impressive a uh, victory uh, as I have seen uh, this season. The Cajuns have had a couple impressive uh, victories. Uh, Southern Miss come from behind victory over Louisiana was just as impressive. Uh, but I, I'm not sure that this team could have played any better uh, than it did. Uh, they were talking about the plus minus. Let's see if we have that here. I thought they had uh, that here um, on the stats. Maybe not. But uh, South Alabama's, everybody was like, you know, in the plus, obviously. And uh, <laughs> uh, Turbo Jones was plus 30, if you can imagine if you can imagine that. Oh, here it is. Uh, home stats. Turbo Jones plus 30. Uh, a couple of guys coming off the bench late, even though they hit a three, were minus a one. Uh, but, I mean, Turbo Jones a plus 30. Greg Parham a plus 20. Uh, Owen White a plus 27. Kevin Samuel plus 21. I mean, it was a complete and thorough domination. I will say, and this is uh, had a quick conversation uh, after the ball game, as these guys were, you know, getting ready to leave, uh, Felipe Hashley was talking to one of the coaches. I said, you know, good luck the rest of the season. You guys are a lot of fun to watch. Uh, you know, best of luck. And he said, thank you. And he goes, not tonight. And I turned around and I said, well, you know what happens. Even before I said that, he turned around and goes, sports. So these guys, you know, understand that, you know, tonight was not their night. And South Alabama uh, outplayed uh, Southern Miss by not a little bit. Uh, Southern Miss looked a little bit like that second, the second half looked a little bit like that Alabama Tennessee ball game where, well, maybe they'll come out and not turn the ball over. And that's exactly what Southern Miss did. They had two more turnovers very quickly and South Alabama just stayed hot. And so a uh, great win by uh, South Alabama. We will see how much that, uh, we'll see how much it, it matters down the stretch. Again, they could beat you, uh, ULM, and I think they're eighth right now in the standings. They are overall eighth in the standings. They got a shot to get to seventh with a Georgia Southern loss to Southern Miss. And then 
you're going to need some other teams to lose uh, Old Dominion and App State to catch them. So uh, we'll see because I think they've lost to both App State and Old Dominion. So they lose uh, those tiebreakers, and they are two games plus behind Troy, uh, although they did split that series. So, again, not getting in the tiebreakers. Luke Creasy from Huntington, you're not going to get me to talk about tiebreakers just yet, although we may have to do so maybe uh, for a Monday episode because now the Cajuns – Uh, are just one game behind Southern Miss. Uh, All right, we'll get to that here. Uh, We got some more close ball games. Uh, Marshall does pull one out. Troy pulls one out. And Louisiana uh, snaps a a two-game skid. We will get to that next. But first, let me tell you a little bit about FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash on. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, it is continuing here. We are locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. A couple of teams pulled uh, a couple of games out. Uh, again, winning on the road is not easy, and Georgia Southern found that out. Georgia Southern, I think, finished the first half against Marshall on a 23 to four run and lost 84 83 uh they were down i believe 23 38 or i'm sorry 23 15 and georgia southern took a 38 27 lead at half uh, and uh, marshall scored 57 points in the second half andrew taylor with a layup to uh, give them the game a winner Georgia Southern had all kinds of issues getting a final shot off. Marshall with, um, I would say the come from ahead victory, but that really wasn't it. They were behind, you know, halfway through the first half. You know, for me, a come from ahead victory is like your head for, you know, 30, 35 minutes and then fall behind and then win in the end. That's the come from ahead victory. This was a come from behind victory and a good job by Marshall. Now 22 and six, they improved to 11 and four Georgia Southern, Had won a couple in a row. They dropped to seven and eight in the the Sun Belt and 14 and 14 overall. Same exact record as South Alabama. And again, Georgia Southern beat South Alabama earlier in the year. So uh, South Alabama is going to have to get another win to Georgia Southern's uh, loss. The other one, Troy escaped with a victory over Arkansas State. I think Troy was, you know, they were leading 30 to 27 at half, but they were behind in the second half. Uh, and they may have scored like the last five, six, seven points in the game. Uh, Troy beats Arkansas State 67 uh, 62. Uh, and Troy stays hot. They've won now four in a row. Let's see here. No, Troy was, it was tied at 60. And Troy actually just makes free throws. Uh, down uh, the stretch was the difference in the ball game. Arkansas State did have a chance to tie uh, at the end, uh, but uh, let's see here. Marquise Davis missed a three-pointer, and then I guess Terrence Ford Jr. missed a three-pointer. He had an open three-pointer that would have tied the game with five seconds left to go. So Troy goes into Arkansas State, and they get a victory. Troy now 9-6. and I think they've moved into fifth place. I mean, they are. Troy is looking at a potential, you know, double buy. What do they they get? They are one game behind James Madison. James Madison with a big win over Old Dominion. And so now James Madison has the two-game lead over Old Dominion, plus they own – uh, the tiebreaker, the Dukes beat Old Dominion uh, 76-67. So JMU sweeps uh, 
the Monarchs this uh, season. James Madison, fourth place against, uh, they are 10 and five. Troy is 10 and six. And James Madison beat Troy. In Troy, 89-87. So for Troy to get the fourth spot and the fourth double bye, they're going to have to hope that James Madison loses twice in the next three ball games. Not impossible, not necessarily likely. They do get the – James Madison does host the Cajuns, and they do host Marshall. In fact, boy, they finish up with a nice four-game homestand. How about that? Uh, Old Dominion, uh, they got uh, Old Dominion at home, then the Cajuns at home, Marshall at home, and Georgia State at home. I would be shocked if they lose more than one. Now, they're playing two of the three top teams. Now, they're the fourth best team in the conference. They're playing two of the top uh, four teams with uh, the Cajuns and Marshall heading into Harrisonburg. But I'd be shocked if the Dukes didn't beat at least one of those teams. And they will, I say for sure, but Georgia State's been just awful on the road this year. They wrap up with, although that I guess that could technically be a letdown game. You don't want to lose your last regular season game, especially when the double bye is on uh, on the line. Uh, so, again, I would presume that, I mean, James Madison is all of a sudden going to be hot if they win. Let's say they win the last three. That's five in a row. Six, seven, eight, nine. It'd be nine out of ten. Wow. So they would be hot uh, going in. We'll see if they do beat Marshall or uh, Louisiana. Uh, again, Troy is nine and six. They're right there behind James Madison, but they'd have to lose uh, a couple of times. All right, so quickly, let's go over the standings and we'll see the other ball games to talk about. Southern Miss remains up top, uh, 12 and three. Uh, Marshall is 11 and four. Cajun's 11 and four. Again, Luke Creasy is going to get me to talk about tiebreakers and I don't want to do it. Marshall's got one more win overall than the Cajuns do, but the Cajuns beat Marshall in the Sun Belt. So that's a tiebreaker comes down to the Sun Belt play, not the overall play, at least not to begin with. I haven't gotten past the first tiebreaker yet, uh, so it doesn't really matter. So if Louisiana and Marshall do finish tied in uh, the Sun Belt Conference, Louisiana wins the tiebreaker, okay? Now, if you get to three teams in the tiebreaker, then my head's really going to hurt, and I'm not sure where it's going. So I'll worry about that later on. Uh, if we do get to that, I'll, I'll read up on it. But uh, right now, Southern Miss leads by one over Marshall and Louisiana. James Madison, two games back behind Southern Miss. But, you know, they could finish second with wins over Louisiana and Marshall. They very easily, James Madison very easily could be in second place. And what did they do? Did they play Southern Miss? They lost to Southern Miss. Okay, so that would be uh, very tough to do as Southern Miss would have to lose the rest of their ball games and James Madison would have to win all their ball games. So that's probably not going to happen a regular season title for James Madison, but what a year it's been for the Dukes, right? They win uh, the East in football, uh, hammer coastal Carolina uh, and uh, introduce themselves well in basketball here uh, as well in the Sun Belt. Troy is fifth at nine and six old dominion, eight and seven app state, eight and seven. Troy, by the way, is now won four in a row. That's right. Let me make sure that's the case. Yeah, Troy all of a sudden has won four in a row. Again, not the easiest schedule at the end, right? They struggled with Arkansas State on Thursday night. They uh, go to Marshall on Saturday. That's a big ball game for both teams. Then they fin Then they go to Monroe, which will not be easy. And then they are home versus Coastal. So they do wrap things up in Troy but uh, three straight games on the road before wrapping the season up at, uh, at home will not be easy. All right. So uh, Troy's nine and six, their fifth old dominion and app state are uh, six Georgia Southern and South Alabama and Monroe technically tied for eighth. And then Texas state and coastal Carolina are 11th. And Georgia State is 12th and Arkansas or uh, Georgia State's 13th and Arkansas State's 14th. All right. Uh, so, again, we will see how this all plays out. Uh, and again, you know, South Alabama moving up 
fast. All right, South Alabama with a Georgia Southern loss and Monroe loss. I mean, South Alabama could very well be, again, it could, they could find themselves in, um, in a sixth spot. And that's pretty good compared to where they were, right? They've won six out of seven and five out of six in the Sun Belt. I mean, they were two and seven. They win on Saturday against Monroe. They're eight and eight. <laughs> that is quite the season turnaround for Richie Riley's guys. Uh, and uh, again, they are a team. Anybody can win this tournament. I do believe that anybody can win it. I'm not sure if one of the lesser teams is going to be able to pull off two upsets, right? Like I think, well, Troy's right there at fifth, at, at five, but Troy could, you know, beat a couple of teams, right? South Alabama, if they get a win, they could knock off one of the top teams. They just knocked off Southern Miss rather easily, right? Georgia Southern, all right? They just went into Marshall, kind of blew it, but they gave Marshall all they could handle. So again, these teams, you know, you win, you're going you're gonna to have a tough game on Thursday for the teams that get a single bye, but then you get a day off to regroup for Saturday. And so now you're going to get these other teams, the Southern Misses, the Marshalls, Louisiana, we'll just say James Madison for the sake of the discussion. And they haven't played in over a week, right? These teams are going to wrap up their season on the 24th of February. They will not play until Saturday, the following week. So it'll that'll be really interesting. You know, going to get a game in, you're going to get some rhythm, or you're going to be out of rhythm. All right, you're not going to be that. Here's the thing, right? You're not going to be that tired after one game. It's not that big of an advantage outside of now. You don't, you can't get eliminated uh, if you play. Uh, you know, if you don't get a double buy, right? You can get eliminated, so that you want the double buy, so you don't get eliminated early. But you're not going to be that tired, okay? I don't think so. No, it'll be interesting uh, to see what happens. All right, let's see what other scores. I think I missed a score uh, in there for uh, the Sun Belt. Uh, Coastal Carolina does beat uh, Georgia State 77-68. Uh, Again, Georgia State's just really struggled uh, on the road. Coastal Carolina proves a 5-10 and 10 in the conference. Uh, the Cajuns, this game was not nearly as close as the score would indicate. It was a 17-point game, 84-67 at half. At half, it was a 31-point game, 49-18. So, you know, Louisiana let up, let the bounce, let the uh, the bench play. Uh, Jordan Brown, 15.7 rebounds at four blocks. How many minutes did he play? Did he even play 20 minutes? He did. He played 30. So he played a bunch. Actually, they played a little bit more than you would have liked. <laughs> Maybe they... Did struggle uh, in the second half. A lot of those guys played over 25 minutes or more. You would think that would not have been the case. A little bit different for South Alabama because, I mean, they took the air out of the ball with like 12 minutes left to go. So a lot of these guys played um, a lot of minutes, although not really. You know, no one played over 30 for South Alabama. Owen White played 29. Judah Brown played 28. Greg Parham played 24. Uh, Turbo and uh, Isaiah Moore played 27. So I thought they played a little bit more than they did, but they were, they really took the air out of the ball with like 12 minutes to go, 10 minutes. They were playing four quarters halfway through the second half. So interesting uh, stuff. All right, quickly, uh, let's take one more timeout. It's gone a little bit longer uh, than I had anticipated. Let's quickly look at Saturday's uh, matchups uh, that are coming up uh, this weekend. We already haven't uh, talked about, and we'll do that quickly. Do want to thank you for uh, subscribing? We are continuing to grow. Keep those comments coming. I will comment, uh, uh, and I'll reply. Uh, hopefully, not too snarky uh, as I tend to do. Also, baseball is starting uh, this weekend, and I did say that uh, Southern Miss did sell out their home game. They will have uh, for certain games uh, standing room only tickets. How impressive is that? Before the season starts, Southern Miss's home schedule has been sold out in baseball. Congratulations. Uh, to the uh, Golden Eagles. All right. Please subscribe uh, either on YouTube and or wherever you get your podcast. Just search for Locked on Sunbelt. All right, quickly, going over uh, Saturday's ball games. Uh, South Alabama is hosting Monroe. We did talk about that. All of a sudden, uh, the, uh, the uh, bloom off the rose for Monroe. They've lost four in a row. And South Alabama, they've won six out of their last seven. Southern Miss looking to rebound against Georgia Southern. 
Now, Georgia Southern had a heartbreaking loss. Southern missed. They got blown out, but they rested a lot of their players. Like, I'm not sure Crowley played 30 minutes in the game, to be honest with you. Let me see how many minutes Austin Crowley played, because I don't think it was that much, 25 minutes. They kind of were waving the white flag early on in that second half. All right. Um, Let's see, elsewhere on Saturday, Coastal Carolina hosting uh, Texas State. Coastal Carolina trying to uh, move up in the standings. They are tied with the Bobcats at 5-10. and 10. Arkansas State hosting uh, Georgia State. I guess Georgia State trying to stay out of last place in the Sun Belt. Uh, App State is hosting Old Dominion. That's got seating written all over it as uh, App State is 8-7, and seven, Old Dominion 8-7. and seven. Big matchup, Marshall and a Troy. Uh, Troy is, you know, on fire. One, one, four in a row. Marshall, a thrilling victory. Come from behind victory over uh, Georgia Southern on Thursday. And James Madison hosting uh, the Raging Cajuns. James Madison, again, James Madison with wins, finishing up the season with all wins. They could be the number two seed uh, in uh, the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. So we'll see how that goes. We'll recap all of this on Monday. Probably do a little bit baseball as well. All right. I want to thank you very much for tuning in to Locked on Sunbelt. Please have a fun and safe uh, weekend. We'll be back on Monday with another edition of Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day.